Gamerheads Podcast is part of the Little Fellow Media Podcast Network, sponsored by podcast host Budsprout, the easiest podcasting software for hosting, promoting, and tracking your podcast. If you love retro video games and want to watch eight or more gamers compete for video game glory, come join us for the RGB High Score Live Tournament. We play one Wednesday a month at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time at twitch.tv slash retrogamebrews. Join us September 18th for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. For more information and updates, follow us on Twitter at retrogamebrews. RGB High Score. Relive the past. And welcome to another episode of Gamerheads. My name is Roger, aka Rogue Leader76. And with me, I have my co host Blue, aka Writer's View. And my co host Christian, aka Fulgan. And returning, we have our good friend Jordan. Hey. Do you have a gamer tag? Not really, because I oh. have one and I hate it, so I didn't <laughs> say it. <laughs> Christian doesn't use his PlayStation one. Christian, what's your PlayStation one? X underscore freak underscore X underscore show underscore X. That's you very know, I good. Think that's how you should introduce yeah. yourself each show. Be like, AKA <laughs> X underscore freak <laughs> underscore. That's me. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a good story, Christian. That you got that that uh, that gamer tag. You, but you never changed it yet because you're afraid you're going to lose all your trophies or what? Yeah, I don't want to change it because of the side effects. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's a big deal for someone like Christian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You could start over. That would be fun, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, thanks. Get all those trophies again, wouldn't that Mm-mm. be? Fun? No. Okay. Well, welcome to the show, everybody, and welcome, listeners from Trenton, Ontario. Home of such notables as Mel Bridgman, former national hockey player, George Ferguson, former pro- professional hockey player for the Toronto Maple Leaf, John Garnett, former National Hockey League goalie, and Steve Graves, former National Hockey League player, and Steve Smith, former National Hockey League player. Wow, there's a lot of hockey players up in Canada. Jordan, you lived in Canada <laughs> for a while, right? It's very accurate. Yeah, it's yeah. very accurate. <laughs> It's very, very accurate. I played hockey once when I was up there, oh, and it was dude. supposed to be like a friendly thing where it's like, oh, people from work just go, and people from other places will just go, and uh, beginners can go too and stuff. So I went, and you could tell literally everyone had been playing for like 20 years of their life, even the <laughs> ones that were like only 20 years old. Somehow they'd been playing for 25 years already. Wow. It was uh, an experience. <laughs> Did you show up with like just like regular skates, and you're like, hey, I'm here to play. <laughs> I brought roller pleasure. blades, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> they come in full gear and you're like uh, is this yeah. real <laughs> well welcome listeners uh from trenton and welcome listeners from around the world uh we have a lot to cover this week we have some apple arcade news we have some news about nintendo and lawsuits and gamestop news gamestop's back in the news again but before we get into all that we do have an icebreaker and this week our icebreaker is what is a game that you've be- you have beaten multiple times, and why have you beaten that game multiple times? So, Blue, we'll start with you. What's one game that you've beaten multiple times, and why? Hmm. Well, I, you know, those of us who grew up back in the retro days when you didn't get very many games every year. <laughs> yeah. I imagine that all of us have a bunch of games that we have just beaten over and over and over because that was all we had to play. And so we got really, really, really good at them. Yep. Um, but I picked two, and those would be The Lion King and Ooh. Donkey Kong Country. Oh, yeah. What about, what, what about those games that you like to play over and over again? I just, uh, they were fun. They were challenging. Like... Um, the Lion King, especially once I finally got past that waterfall part in the Hakuna Matata level. Mm. And I was like, that was my white whale when I was a child <laughs> was to get past that part. And then once I'd finally done it, like I was just so elated that I just played it over and over and over again, just because I could, and I could finally do it. Mm. See, and Donkey Kong Country is just 
an amazing game still to this day. And my little sister, who she doesn't even play games anymore, but the two games that she still goes back to a couple times a year are Plants vs. Zombies and Donkey mm. Kong Country. Oh, nice. It's funny. It's funny that you said that they don't play that your sister doesn't play games anymore. Like I run into people like that I grew up with that played video games, and then I'll ask them like, "Hey, do you play games?" Or I'll talk about the podcast, and they're like, mm-hmm. "Oh, I I don't play games anymore." I'm like, what? Why? I actually ran into a friend of mine, and he and I was talking about the podcast, and he's like, "Oh, I don't I don't play video games. I'm old." And I'm like, "How old are you?" And he said, 42. And I'm like, "So am I." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Um, are you going to get the remake of The Lion King? No, not not unless it comes down in price. But this, but you can like use the go back and. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> okay. The people that use that, do they really beat the game then? <laughs> not in my opinion, but. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like playing Mario Maker. If you screw up three mm. times and Luigi shows up and says, <laughs> yeah. hey, would you like some help? And you use him, you didn't beat the level. Yeah, that's true. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I've not used Luigi to try to make it past Jordan's levels, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Even Luigi can't option? beat them. I, I, don't, I don't know. Can, can you use Luigi I don't think again? you can on oh, the... Oh. oh, I think you're right. The user-made levels. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those levels, by the way, Jordan really drove me mad. So it was fun watching you play them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Thanks, Blue. What about you, Christian? What is one game that you've beaten many times, and why? I had to think and count for which one I'd beaten the most times because I thought it was Borderlands Two. After a couple months ago, I played through it two and a half more times. So right now, I'm sitting at uh five playthroughs of borderlands 2 oh wow but the game i've played through more than that is kingdom hearts 2 i played through kingdom hearts 2 six times wow and i have thoroughly enjoyed it every single time i've played through it i just can't get enough of kingdom hearts 2 i don't know what it is i played it the first time at a friend's house and i was just like smitten i was like oh my gosh you have this game in your possession and you're not playing it why do you have this game just sitting here? And I only got to play like the first four hours of it. But ever since then, I was like, this Kingdom Hearts 2 is crazy. I need this. I need this Kingdom Hearts 2. So like a year later, got a PS2. And then like, what was like five, six months after that, I finally got a memory card and got Kingdom Hearts 2. And that was all I needed. I stayed up all night, played Kingdom Hearts 2 for like 20 hours straight And then finished it that once, played through it three more times after that, loved it both times, or all three times. And then playing it on PS4, the remaster version, because that remaster is fantastic. Not only is the music, uh, you know, bumped up so that the Port Royal theme isn't absolutely awful the way it was on the PS2 original, but the visuals are superb. It runs at a native 4K, 60 frames per second on the PS4 Pro unprecedented visual fidelity on the ps4 pro it looks fantastic (laughs) and not only that the game is also just like so much fun the combat system boggles my mind i could sit there and tap x while playing kingdom hearts 2 forever indefinitely as far as i'm concerned it just feels way more complex than it really is in a really weird way that makes me feel like I can never quite grasp it despite the fact that I've played through it six times and one of those playthroughs one of my more recent playthroughs was 100% I did everything in the gummy ship stuff everything in the game collected everything and I still feel like I don't completely understand how that game works and it's so fascinating and just infinitely entertaining for me wow blue how many times have you beaten that game I'm just curious um once oh okay (laughs) that's okay you don't have to be a crazy person blue (laughs) my i do love though that you know exactly how many times you have played through games yeah and because like i was thinking about that question i was like the most i don't know i played this a bunch i played this a bunch (laughs) yeah Yeah, i like i like just like a singular finite experience i like sitting down getting to the end of something and looking back on it fondly. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I, I agree with Blue. I I was thinking about this too, and I'm like, I don't know how many times I've beaten the game that I'm going to talk about, but I know I've beaten it more than once, but I don't know how many times I have. So that is impressive, Christian. What about you, Jordan? What's uh, what's one game that you've beaten multiple times and why? Yeah, I'm going to steal Blue's answer because it was definitely Lion King. It was, oh. yeah, it was back in the day when I had all the time and no money and you had those few games. And <laughs> But also all the Super Nintendo games were so hard. So it's like mm. I played so many of them, but very rarely beat them. But Lion King, for some reason, I could beat over and over and over. So that was definitely the one I played through the most and... God, I don't even know the last time I played a game through a second time. There's just so many other games to play that I just never revisit a game ever. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm the same way with movies and books. Like I don't rewatch movies and I don't reread books because mm-hmm. there's yeah. so many more out there. It's like you almost feel like you're wasting your time yeah. and you should be experiencing something new. Yeah. Absolutely. The the only book that I've read over and over or books i should say series of books that i've read over and over are is the harry potter series like we're, this is probably like third fourth time going through those books now with the kids but i think partly is because the kids really love them too oh well, yeah if you're doing it with your kids that's that's different yeah yeah but yeah i know you're right i mean i don't i rarely watch a movie uh again and again and again that's that's why i don't really own that many movies because of that fact uh, holiday movies is different like we'll we'll have some holiday traditions that we watch movies like like the Grinch and stuff like that, but you're right. Like the old movies... animated Grinch. Yeah, the old animated. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, <laughs> not the no, not the Jim Carrey. <laughs> wait, wait like, hold on. I quit. No, the Jim Carrey one is amazing. Hold on, that movie Are is fantastic. Serious? I love that one. Where's the I'm Where's sorry, the kick button? Where's lost... the kick button? <laughs> you just lost all credibility there, Jordan. Oh, Jim Carrey was fantastic in it. It was amazing. I think I think Jim Carrey did as good as any human could have done, but they gave him an impossible task. Yeah, yeah. Where do we come down on Mike Myers' Cat in the Hat? Uh, Oh no, we don't talk about that. Yeah, good, bad, good. That's what I thought. I have friends who like vow that that movie is one of the best movies ever made. Your friends watch movies? (laughs) I guess not. It's it's just like that movie is. The embodiment of defecation on Dr. Seuss's grave. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know who does a good voice uh, of of uh, Cat in the Hat is Martin Short. He does a good job. Uh, there's an animated cartoon series with Martin Short as Cat in the Hat. It was on uh, PBS. It was really good. Uh, for myself, then the game that I probably beat the most times. Again, I don't know how many times I've beaten this game, but I know I have beaten it multiple times because of the fact that this is the only game we had for a while. And that would have been Super Mario Brothers, the first one. Mm. Nice. Because, mm-hmm. you know, my parents, <laughs> when they got the Nintendo, they're like, this is the game you're going to play. Well, they did get two other games. They got Solomon's Key, which I don't think anybody's ever beaten. Oof. And uh, Mighty Bomb Jack, which, again, I don't think anybody's ever beaten either of those games. Solomon's, I've tried. Solomon's Key is like kind of in the Milan Secret Castle neighborhood yes. of games. Yes. Where it's like, wait, what? yes exactly but when we got a nintendo uh my friend who had a nintendo his mom convinced my mom to buy us a nintendo because she's like mary you have to get you have to get the kids in this nintendo it's amazing and uh and then when my mom bought it she's like well you have to buy two games too so then she picked out (laughs) <laughs> which is like what's well, games that are the cheapest games and solomon's key and mighty Bob jack were the cheapest games. <laughs> no. uh Bummer. i tried them yeah i tried to play those those are really tough but i i played mario over and over and over again so and duck hunt but you don't really beat duck hunt there's no real end to duck hunt is there i don't think so i don't know um, that's a good question actually because i also played that game a ton as a kid and i don't remember ever hitting the end I don't think there is. I think it's like Pac-Man. Oh, maybe is there end of Pac-Man? There's an end of Pac-Man. There is. Yes. Okay. Well, I haven't beaten that game either, then apparently. But I beat Mario quite often. I again, I don't know how often I beat it, but I do remember beat that one a lot. And then Mario Three, I think, was the other one that we probably beat a lot as as kids too when we got that game. But for sure, the first one we beat uh, umpteen times. I don't remember because <laughs> that's all we had. Umpteen but, times is a number. Umpteen. It is. It is. <laughs> Oh, so apparently you can kind of beat Duck Hunt, but also oh. not really. There's 99 levels, and after you oh. beat it, it goes to level zero, and the game glitches out. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, I have not gotten the glitch. Do you know, so a side note, did you know, like, I can't believe people are just finding this out now, but did you know you can control the ducks in Duck Hunt? 
How did people not know that? I know. That's what I was thinking. How did you not know that? I didn't know that for a very oh. long time until like a couple <laughs> years ago. And I was like, wow, that would have made my childhood so much cooler. But <laughs> It's the only I... thing that personally I think gave Duck Hunt any sort of replay value because it's yes. boring as hell, you guys. <laughs> and, but, you know, if you can put the gun in the hands of your younger siblings and yes. you control the, the, oh, the ducks, then it's yes. like, okay, now we're having some fun. Yes, 100%. That's exactly what happened in our house, too. I'm like, gave it to my brother, my, my middle brother. Um, and he said, okay, you play. I'm going to control the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> and at first he didn't think I was really controlling the ducks. But then, like, yeah, he couldn't shoot any of them. And he's like, wow, you really are controlling those ducks. <laughs> Have you heard of the game, the VR game that's like Duck Hunt called Duck Season? No. Yes. It's, it's like this weird meta thing. Yeah. Like horror game. Yes. <laughs> Whoa. It's actually terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Is it on the PS VR? Uh, no, I think it's just on like on Steam. Okay. Um, but I watched someone play it, and I was very glad that I didn't pick it up myself because I would have <laughs> just, yeah, no, just no. It's terrifying. Yeah. Have you played that, Christian? No, no. I've only seen it also. Like Jordan okay. Is. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm I, very tempted to look into getting a VR, but games like that would scare me for sure. <laughs> but people love streams of yeah. horror games when the person mm -hmm. playing like is genuinely freaking out. Yes. Like yes. that's viewership gold right there. It is. It is. That is true. Listeners, what is one game that you've beaten several times and why? You can let us know. You can send us a tweet at GamerHeadsPC. You can also send us an email at info at GamerHeadsPodcast.com. You can also go to Facebook.com slash GamerHeadsPodcast and leave us a message there. Or you can go to our website, and that website is GamerHeadsPodcast.com. All right, let's move on to the news then. And we have a couple items here, and if anyone has other news, we can certainly bring that up as well. The first one, Blue, do you want to bring up the first one here? You got it. This is from CNET. Apple Arcade is coming September 19th for iOS devices. <clears throat> Apple's gaming service will cost $4.99 per month. The gaming subscription service will offer more than 100 new and exclusive games that Apple is working with game creators to create. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> sentence. No, it is. <laughs> Apple stressed that the games will not be available on other mobile devices and will not be part of other subscription services. Game types will include multiplayer and AR, and Apple says it will be adding games over time. So some of the games listed in the article are The Artful Escape from Anapuma Interactive, Beyond a Steel Sky from Revolution Software, Frogger in Toy Town from Konami, Hot Lava from Clay Entertainment, Lego Brawls from Lego and Red Games, Oceanhorn 2, Knights of the Lost Realm from Comfox and Brothers, Raymond Mini from Ubisoft, Repair from Us Two Games, The Pathless from Annapuma and Giant Squid, Sonic Racing from Sega and Hardlight, and Where Cards Fall from Snowman and the Game Board. Hmm. I don't, I don't know most of those. I don't either. I mean, I, I think I've heard of the Artful Escape and Frogger and Toy Town. Is that like the Frogger from Cross the Street Frogger? Is that yeah. the same Frogger? It is. They made a lot of, I think, pretty awful Frogger games. But Kon Konami owns that now? They own that franchise? I think they have for a while, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, Lego Brawls? Oceanhorn 2 I've heard of. There's a Enter the Gungeon follow-up called Exit the Gungeon. That's oh. going to be part of the service. And that's only going to be on the service? It's going to be no, I believe it's going okay. to come to other platforms as well. Are, are, does Apple have any exclusive games only? Well, I, I thought that's, that's what hard. they were trying to say, that yeah, these games are exclusive. exclusive. Okay. Yeah, it's I'm unclear. Sure. Yeah. But it's it's five dollars a month, I think, right? Yeah, four ninety nine a month. Is this something that you guys are interested in getting? Not when I don't know any of the games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Frogger and Toy Town is not really working for me. Yeah, is this in this? I'm assuming this is similar to like Netflix, where it's a subscription, so you don't own any of these games, right? You just play them, 
No, and... supposedly the the big difference between this um, Apple Arcade and Stadia is that you can actually download the games oh, you to can. your devices and play them okay. offline. That's okay. what they stressed as being their like differentiation point. But if you if you quit your subscription though, you don't get to keep the games though, right? I imagine not. Yeah. I, I imagine there's an app you have to use yeah. to launch the games. So Yeah. Yeah. Christian, are you thinking about getting the series? Well, I absolutely would if I had an iPhone. I think this is awesome because I, I have an Android phone. I probably don't have any plans to get an iPhone. But I think this is really neat because there's a lot of times where I've got my phone and I like playing video games and I don't have anything else. And I'm like, you know, I should I feel like playing a game now. And then I look at the games that I have, and I just play, like, three games over and over because I like them. And those are, like, the only ones I feel like I can really play. And those are, like, Desert Golf is one, which is a really simple, just golfing, 2D flash game almost, but it's really relaxing. And there's uh, Super Mario Run I'll boot up every now and then because I freaking love Super Mario Run. And it's a tragedy that Nintendo went a completely different direction with their business models with mobile games. And then what else do I play? I think uh, Solitaire, Fairway Solitaire. I find that pretty fun. But then if I want to play something else, I'll open up the Play Store and then I'll go to like the top free stuff. And there's like a handful of developers that just put out the same types of games over and over and over. And it's like endless games over and over, the match three games over and over. And then I go to the premium stuff and then I'm like, well, I don't I don't know what which one of these I'm going to like. I don't know what I should spend 50 cents on, what I should spend three bucks on and with this apple curating content for the price of like one app a month i get instant access to all of these supposedly quality games i would definitely be interested hmm. what about you jordan what do you think uh yeah basically exactly what christian said i've never had an iphone but this is the one thing that they've ever announced that i was like man i actually wish i had an iphone because this is genius like it's so cheap even if you know, do it for a month, and if all the games suck, then never do it again. But they're adding new games and everything. And like Christian said, like, I constantly go into the App Store on Android, and I'll, like, try to download games or find some games that are good. And I'll usually start them up, play them for, like, 10 minutes, and be like, nope, not good. And a lot of these seem like they're super well done, and, like, they're from, you know, bigger studios, and they're super legit. And being able to hop between all of them for, you know, $5 for the entire month is a crazy price. Like, I legitimately think... I would pay at least 10, if not more, like for this mm. service. Wow. Shh, they'll hear you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. See, it's funny because I think I, I'm on the side with Blue on this one that I would not, I don't have an iPhone uh, either uh, or or an iPad that could play any of these games. I do have an iPad, but it's like really like first or second gen. So it's not even that, <laughs> that, that. Current and that's that's another reason why. So one, I I agree with Blue. Like I don't know any of these games, so it doesn't really except for Ocean Horn. I mean, but the rest of them don't really like grasp me very much. But Rayman Mini, yeah, okay. dude, those two D Rayman side scrollers are yeah, fantastic. Yeah, but I mean, I don't need to buy a service to play those games. I can play those on my Nintendo Switch or my PlayStation. I mean, I know. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, didn't mean. No, to... go ahead. Go. No, I go was ahead. just gonna say. I think that. That probably has a lot to do with it because um, Christian and Jordan are saying that they're always looking for games on their phone. Yeah. And I never am looking me for either. games mm. on my phone. Yeah. I it's would so rather funny. just bring my 2DS with me. Yes. And then have all of those like actual good games as opposed to trying to, you know, like Christian was mm. describing, try to find something halfway decent on the on the app store. Yeah. See, and I think that's, I mean, it's, it, that, I'm the same way, Blue. I don't ever play games on my phone, but I think you mentioned this, Christian, once in a, in a previous episode, and, and actually, I felt this way this past week, uh, when you said, you know, it's easy enough for you to pull out a phone and play games, like, it seems to be acceptable. No. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> when you pull out your Nintendo Switch, and people are like, what are you doing? Are you playing games? <laughs> exactly. Nintendo's trying to break that, though. I mean, they show plenty of their commercials where people are like, on a train and playing in the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Haters going to hate you guys. You, yes, you do exactly. you. Exactly. You want to pull out a Switch, you pull out a Switch. I know, exactly. But the other thing that I would say, too, is this is the reason that I I steer away from, from these types of games is because, you know, it might work on, like, 
you know, obviously it'll work on current gen and maybe even the past gen iPhones, but eventually you're not going to be able to play some of these games and you're going to have to upgrade your phone anyway. And I just, I hate that. I hate that, that, I mean, that, that, that feeling where you, it's like, well, I have to get a new phone so I can keep playing these games. Like, that's not the reason I have a phone, <laughs> I have a phone to call people. <laughs> Anyway, that's my thoughts. It's interesting, though, because, I mean, Lou and I are from a different generation. <laughs> Wait a second. Now you're making us sound old. I'm fine with that because it makes me sound young. So I, I like this. <laughs> oh, we'll move on then. <laughs> the next one. Uh, Christian, do I take the next article here? Yeah, this one's from Polygon. Nintendo filed another lawsuit, this one multi-million dollar with a ROM website. Nintendo of America filed the lawsuit on September 10th against the owner of the ROM website, ROM Universe. The company is seeking damages in the amount of $150,000 for each copyright infringement and up to $2 million for each trademark infringement. Nintendo said the pirated games display, quote, counterfeit copies of Nintendo's trademarks when the games are played, as well as infringing the copyrighted works themselves. Ram Universe reportedly offers membership to its site, priced at $30 a year. The membership allows users to download, quote, an unlimited number of pirated games, referred to as ROMs, with higher speeds than non-members, Nintendo alleges. The company says the lawsuit that Ram Universe is, quote, among the most visited and notorious online hubs for pirated Nintendo video games, end quote, with nearly 300,000 downloads for the offered Nintendo Switch games and more than 500,000 downloads for Nintendo 3DS games. Oh. Wow. So. You, you know, because you guys know, I just got my 2DS. Uh -huh. And browsing the eShop and seeing the prices e. of those games for the 3DS, even for like, um, you know, the uh, virtual console stuff, mm -hmm. it's like, you want, you want $8 for this? It's, yeah. it's 30 years old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say I'm not surprised. I didn't realize that there are ROM sites like this that offer like $30 a year uh, membership, and then you can play any of those games. I, I didn't I didn't realize that existed, to tell you the truth. That's probably what did them in, too. Yeah. And Nintendo, I mean, it's not the first time Nintendo has gone after ROM no. sites. So you think they would know better. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, and... and Honestly, I can't blame Nintendo for going after these people. I mean, like, they have every right to say this is ridiculous. Like, they... Oh, yeah. Like, this is one of those things where it's like when they go after the people making fan games and stuff, I get kind of upset because I'm like, come on. Like, they do a lot of really cool stuff. Like, just like, you know, you see some of the Mario or the Zelda games that f fans are making and they look really cool or Pokemon and they shut them down. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. With this, I completely get it, especially when you see the number that's like 300,000 Nintendo Switch games. It's like, yeah. that's the current console. Like, that's a lot of money being lost, you know? Yeah. Um, and the fact that these people are then offering, yeah, a membership and making money off of games they are just giving away for free, essentially. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think on this one, Nintendo's completely um, on their side, 100%. Yeah. I agreed. Uh, I, th I think the only thing that... that... I have said before in the past about like ROM sites is that I do like the idea of having like historical mm -hmm. uh, games, you know, like an archive of games, right? Because a lot of those games are lost forever, especially if the studio like shut down and a lot of times those games are just gone. So it'd be nice. I, I know there's talks of that there was going to be some curation like of these old games of archives, like of old games, but this is not one of those situations for sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely not. But um, I totally agree because I think that a, not every time, but a lot of the time people who do these kind of sites do it because they love the games. And in a lot of cases, they seem to love the old games more than Nintendo does. Yeah. And to respect the old games more than Nintendo does and to realize their historical value. And Nintendo seems to not care if it's not something that they can make money off of today. Yeah. 
yeah when 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 pirating of music was such a big thing i said uh i was on some kind of radio show where they talked about that and i said you know if if it if the music industry didn't come out with such crappy music they'll come out with like one hit on the album and the rest of it's crap maybe if they focused on like a whole album full of like good music then that wouldn't happen and yes do you remember those days? Oh, my yes. gosh. You have to go put down, like, 20 bucks for a CD for the one song yes. that you wanted. Exactly. But then like, then iTunes came out, right? And they're like, you want just one song? You can buy it for a dollar. I'm like, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think, I mean, to your point, Blue, I think that if Nintendo, like, sold some of these games really cheap. Now, on the Switch, there are some of those like old arcade games like they uh like I got Donkey Kong for 7.99 still $8 it's still kind of expensive even though I own like three versions of Donkey Kong now but mm -hmm. <laughs> bought it again on the Switch but I, I and I know that like there is the you know online services which is kind of cool uh instead of having like a virtual console they have those the the apps where you can play all those games well yeah but, but i mean you think about what they've chosen to put on yeah. the on like the nes one and then you think about everything that they left yes. off yes yeah make them available to me really cheap and i will buy them <laughs> yeah because uh, uh, you know the the value of the games is more than their selling price yeah absolutely so yeah it's not surprising uh the next one article is not surprising jordan are you are you okay with taking uh article here yeah for sure okay uh this one comes from business insider uh gamestop the world's largest game retailer is closing 180 to 200 stores and that's just the beginning uh quote says we are on track to close between 180 and 200 underperforming stores globally by the end of this fiscal year GameStop CFO Jim Bell said on Tuesday afternoon, the chain has over 5,700 locations around the world. This is just the beginning of a major calling of GameStop retail locations. Bell said he expects a much larger, quote, group of stores will be closed in the next one to two years. Wow. I like that verb, calling. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, it's not, not, I guess, not that shocking. Um I, I guess the shocking part to me was I didn't realize they had 5,700 stores worldwide. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Does that, does that, are they all GameStops or does that include like Electronics Boutique? Wasn't that, wasn't, didn't they own EB Toys or something like that? Didn't GameStop own that as well? I feel like they did. I don't actually I don't, know. Yeah. It, it, it has the same lettering. I thought that they owned it, but maybe not. Maybe they, maybe, I thought they bought them and then just changed them, but I could be wrong. But, I mean, in the whole scheme of 5,700 stores, 180 to 200 stores are, is not that much. And actually, <laughs> the press release, or the I guess the press release when they announced this, like it made a positive spin. And I get that. That's how these things work. But he's like, oh, this is going to like make us more profitable because you know, we're just going to cut the, the fat, basically, right? I'm like, okay, but if you live in an area where you don't have a lot of options uh for gaming outlets i mean walmart's available i guess and best buy is available but for used games there's not a whole lot of options out there i guess you can buy them online or you can go to amazon.com but i don't know i mean as much as i complain about gamestop sometimes i mean i don't want to see them just go away completely because I think there's some cool things that they can be doing with the stores. I like this idea of these segmented stores where they're going to come up with different um, segments or different uh, business models for each store. I like that idea, and I want them to go forward with that idea. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's sad because especially growing up, it was like the one place I would buy a lot of games. So it sucks to see, like, I have a lot of good memories with GameStop growing up and everything like that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, at the same time, I guess it's not really surprising. It feels like they didn't really like shift with the change in gaming and it going to digital and stuff like that. Um, and like, I feel like over the years, there's just been more and more like physical stuff, like physical items that you could buy and like memorabilia and stuff like that, as opposed to more like just games. 
I feel like if maybe they went to be like, okay, we're going to have a whole section of the store that's for esports type stuff, and they mm -hmm. went that direction, or you know, something different to draw people in as opposed to just used games, um, but they didn't. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I yesterday I was looking for games. And I had the GameStop website up and then the Amazon website up side by side. And so I'd look up a title on GameStop and then I'd look it up on Amazon. And every single time it was like $10 cheaper on Amazon. Really? Yeah. Like uh, wow. Sekiro. It was still, oh, what was it? It was still 50 I think, on 50 or 60 on GameStop and then $10 less on Wow. Amazon. And then uh, the collection, the mana collection was the same. It was seriously, it was every single one that I looked up. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know how it is at other GameStops, but at our GameStop, they were selling cell phones, cricket cell phones. Hmm. I'm not sure if they still do that. Christian, do you know? Do they still sell cricket cell phones? I think are... so. I'm not positive, though. But I said this to one of my friends the other day. I said, Whenever you see a business like branch out and sell things that are not normal to what they normally sell, that means they're grasping at straws. Like, for instance, do you guys have family videos? No. No. Okay. Uh, it's funny because on Stranger Things, the last scene is they're, they're going to go work at a family video. And I thought that's just like a common thing. It's it's like it's a video store. It's a, a it's video a, rental place. A video rental place. Oh, okay. Yeah. We got that from the context of the scene. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, but now they sell, what is it? CBD, right? And they're like, stop in and get your CBD here. And I'm like, what, what? Huh. <laughs> like, this is weird. <laughs> like, I'm going to go there and buy CBD from you? Like, this is strange. And I, I just feel like once uh, a, a, a brand reaches out, you know that they're at the end of their, their rope and they're in trouble. And when GameStop started selling cell phones, I was like, uh oh, this is not a good sign. Um, I guess we'll see. I, I I don't think the one in Stevens Point is in trouble, though, because, I mean, I talked to the manager. And may, the way he makes it sound, I was like, we're going to be one of the hometown game, game stores where they're going to have, like, tables out and they're going to have tournaments and people can hang out and play games. And I thought that was kind of cool. So I'm hoping that that stays <laughs> and it doesn't, doesn't go away because, yeah, that would I be know, sad. We'll see. I mean... Um... Like, I'm reading the website, The Motley Fool, mm. and they're saying that GameStop lost more than three quarters of their yes. value in a single year. Yes. How many companies can come back from that yeah. <laughs> or survive that? I mean, that's insane. Yeah. You're, you're worth 25% of what you were a year ago. Yep. I saw that, too. Like, I think their shares are, like, super cheap right now. Uh, 315 Okay. Per share. Okay, so they went down like a dollar something, yeah. So still, that's pretty cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll buy any. No, no. You want I don't know. Best. It's tempting. <laughs> buy low, sell high. <laughs> that's right. But you might not sell be selling high. Uh, yeah, you might not be selling those at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else? Do you guys have anything else in the news? Mm -mm. Jordan, have anything? Nope. Okay. Then let's move on to listener feedback. And listeners, you can always provide us feedback. Christian, how can people send us a tweet? At Gamerheads PC on Twitter. And how can they send us an email? Info at GamerheadsPodcast.com. And our Facebook page? Facebook.com slash Gamerheads Podcast. And our website? It's GamerheadPodcast.com. GamerheadsPodcast.com. Yeah. So last week we asked the question, what's uh, one video game uh, release for this fall that you're most excited for? Uh, before we go into the to the listener feedback, Jordan, what's one game that you're excited for this, this fall? Oh, man, that's such a tough... There's so many good games coming out this fall. Um, if I had to pick just one, I think Death Stranding is at the top, Ooh. especially after oh. the, the gameplay they just showed at the Tokyo Game Show, the, like, 50 minutes yeah. they showed. Yeah, I think that's at the top, but then there's so many other ones. Like I'm stoked for the Outer Worlds. Yes. Um, like I'm really excited for that one. Uh, next week is Link to the Past and Untitled Goose Game. Um, Luigi's Mansion Three on Halloween. Like there's so many good games coming out. I'm so excited for it. Yeah, yeah, there are. This is this is a crazy 
crazy time to be a gamer for sure. So <laughs> it's certainly going to hurt our pocketbooks. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Christian, you want to take the first one there? At the true John, at the true Donnie G tweeted at us. He said, "I'll be honest, I haven't been up and up on the new releases, but I did see Link's Awakening announced, and I've never played that game." Wow, that surprises me that he has never played that game. Well, yeah. some of us didn't grow up playing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. I suppose if if you grew up as like you know that was in a day of age where if you grew up to if you were grew up a Sega fan or that was your system. Well, yeah, and and even um, see, I'm thinking by the time we get to Game Boy Color, hmm. that's when I'm like late high school. I'm thinking, and so I was very busy with other things. Hmm. Yeah, I never yeah. actually played it when I was a kid. And I, I oh. just realized, I think I said A Link to the Past when I said what I was looking forward to because I'm playing that on the the Switch right now because it's one of the, yes. the ones they added on there. Link's Awakening, yes. Never played the Link's Awakening, but I'm very excited for it. And it's just adorable. Like, I, it's so cute. I want more yeah. of the stuff in that art style. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I have it pre-ordered. We'll see. We'll see if GameStop actually has my pre-order. That happened to me too, by the way. <laughs> I saw that some people were getting their pre-orders just canceled out of the blue, and now they couldn't find any more. Yep. Oh, that happened to me. All my pre-orders are gone. And then I tweeted at them saying, "Hey, what's going on here?" And uh, I don't know if I got a satisfactory response. They just said they have some features they're updating. And sorry about that. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, whoa. You you can't just do that to people. Yeah. I think I mean, I have the receipts. So hopefully I can just walk in there and be like, see, I, I bought this. So you can. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually. Okay. I see Game Boy Color came out November 18, 1998. So okay. I was a junior in high school. I was out of high school. I was in college. So I was not playing Game Boy Color. I was playing PlayStation in college. Hmm. Yeah. I was like in fourth grade or something. <laughs> and Christian, you were like two? Yep. I yeah. was two years ago. <laughs> uh, All right. So that's the second time that Blue Night feel old. All right. Moving on. Uh, the next one. Blue, do you want to take the next one? Sure. This is from at slide underscore Bob. And they tweeted... If I were to make a top four, it would be Link's Awakening Remake, Luigi's Mansion 3, That Jedi Thing, <laughs> and Borderlands 3. I don't care. I liked the second one much more. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, the Jedi Thing. There's actually quite a few Jedi games coming out this fall. There's a couple on the Switch, but I think they're just coming to the I Switch. I think they mean the one that everybody means. Yeah. The Fallen Order. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one. I know that Christian, you're not excited for that one, but I kind of am. We'll see. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna play it. Oh, but oh. I, you know, I don't have high hopes. Hmm. He's been hurt before. Yeah, many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jordan, do you want to take the next one? Sure. Uh, at Nacklin E tweeted. While I am still stoked about Langrisser 1 and 2 coming out for the PS4 and Switch in March, I loved Langrisser since I first played it back in 1991 or 1992 on the Sega Genesis. I don't know much about Trial of Mana, but that's to be out late April. Yeah. Yeah, oh my gosh. I mean, we're just looking at this fall. Like, there's a lot of big games coming out, like, early next year, too. This oh, is yeah. Gonna be, this is going to be really really painful in my pocketbook for sure <laughs> for a long time for a long time <laughs> uh christian you want to take the next one yeah unless Flo tweeted we will get code vein the demo is mm. quite convincing with the combat system rooted in dark soul plus it plays co-op and my god i want luigi's mansion 3 it is the switch game i want most wow crazy uh, Interesting to see Vane? someone excited for Code Vein. Not many doesn't people I, are. I, I have the that. demo downloaded. I still need to play oh. it. Uh, I just pre-ordered it. <laughs> yeah, you did I did? What, because I what played the demo and this? all. I'll I'll tell you when when we get to what we're playing. Ah, I played the demo perfect. and so I'll tell you all about it. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, and then the final one there, Blue. Do you want to read the final one? At Sergeant Fit Geek tweeted Borderlands Three. 
pre-ordered the Super Deluxe and Luigi's Mansion 3. I do want Zelda, but not for $60, and I don't really care for Star Wars. A lot of people, a lot of people are not caring for Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, I was surprised to see Luigi Manson's Mansion Three on a lot of people's list. Um, it I don't looks know. I so mean, good. Y- yeah, I like. I mean, I'm excited for it too. I just didn't know it was such a. I didn't realize a lot of people liked that game as much as they. Well, did. I think you know because it's it's a GameCube game, which mm. um, by the way, we're recording this on Saturday the 14th, which is the 18th anniversary of the GameCube release. Oh my gosh. Um. So it's an 18-year-old game-ish, and uh, probably there's just a great deal of nostalgia in people's minds for this series. Yeah. Uh, that would explain it. They're de- yeah. It seems like they're doing something marketing-wise, because, yeah, we're getting a lot of Luigi's Mansion 3 answers. Yeah. Which is interesting. And I just finished playing through Luigi's Mansion 2, and that has me a little more tepid on what Luigi's Mansion 3 is going to be, because I like the first one more. And I hope they borrow more from the first one than they do the second one. But there is good stuff in the second one. And if they can marry those together, it's going to be a beautiful beautiful and fruitful marriage. And they will establish a wonderful family for Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. Okay, yes. Luigi's Mansion was actually a launch title for the GameCube. Mm-hmm. So it is. Really. Yeah, so it, you're right. You're absolutely right. So it is 18 <laughs> years old as well. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't realize that. I you know, and it's also weird because Luigi Mansions two is the only is only found on us on the three DS, right? That yep. wasn't on Yeah. Uh so I mean, although three DS sold like hotcakes, so yep. I'm sure a lot of people played that. I speaking of uh GameCube's birthday, I never owned a GameCube ever. <gasps> Seriously? Nope. I, I own kind of own one now because my Wii is backwards compatible. I got the first generation of Wii, so I can play GameCube games on it. I don't play. I don't have that many GameCube games. I have like four. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one. That was one like system that I don't really know much about. So if you have mm. like trivia questions about that generation, I would never. I wouldn't be able because I, I was Sony at that point. I was playing all Sony uh, systems. Interesting. Uh, and and it, you know I was in college, so I didn't have a lot of money. And so I would, you know, I had to pick one or the other and I picked Sony because everybody else was playing Sony games. All my friends were playing Sony games. So that's what I picked. I see. Because see, for me, like I loved the Nintendo and I loved the Super Nintendo. And then the N64 came out and I was like, what is this hellish landscape that I'm looking at? (laughs) Yeah. And so then I just, I wanted nothing to do with that console. And then the GameCube came out and I was like, oh, thank God it's better. Yeah, it, this is this is what I want. Just make it yeah. look normal. Yeah. See, you know, it's. it's I mean, I I want to buy uh, like Mario Sunshine because it looks cool. Like I've never played that game ever, and every time if I find it, if I find it in a used game store, it's still super expensive. It's like forty bucks, and oh, I have a. Hard... I would pay forty bucks. You would? Okay. Yeah. I went to a game store um on Wednesday, and like, they had a. They had a uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day for like $90. Yeah, that's a expensive one. I know, right? Or they had a um, a, a Famicom Battletoads for like 110 Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> like if I saw uh, Mario Sunshine for 40 bucks, I'm all over that. Hmm. Yeah. I don't I, 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 Yeah. I need it. I need I have a couple, like I said, a couple of GameCube games. I have... um. Uh, Baldur's Gate, which I really loved as a kid, so I bought that on the GameCube recently. Uh, I haven't. Gate. Uh, I... Was it a spinoff? No, I mean I don't know. I mean, isn't doesn't Baldur's Gate isn't they have the? I mean, Baldur's Gate is just a top-down Diablo-like game. That... On GameCube? Yeah. Uh, there's a the original Baldur's Gate is like an old D and D computer RPG. Are you talking about Dark Alliance? Yeah, probably Dark Alliance. Uh, okay. I don't know. Yes, don't that's know the Diablo. Like, yes, sir. The <laughs> okay. Baldur's Gate spinoff. Okay. All right. So I have that on the GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played it yet, so I don't really know if it is. Uh, uh, so thank you, listeners, for giving feedback. We really appreciate that. 
Um, let's move on to the games that we're currently playing then. And Blue, we'll start with you. What are you currently playing? So I had a very busy week. Mm. And I played many things. Whoa. I have played um, more Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Sure. And <laughs> I know. I'm still not back to the plot. I'm just going through the map. And every place that has a question mark, I go find it what the question mark is. And then if there's location objectives, then I do those. And I'm not going to stop until I have completed the entire map. <laughs> I oh, forgot man. The, I forgot that Jordan's on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> I'm still talking about the game. Yeah. Wait, did you, I have to ask, did you play the newest and final Lost Tales of Greece? Not until I finished the map. Oh, Oh, I'm at right. 130 hours, and I there's still so much of the map to do. I can't even. It's crazy how big this game is. <laughs> Blue, yeah, you don't massive. have to do every question mark. That trophy is in Origins, not Odyssey. <laughs> you only have to do the underwater ones in Odyssey, Blue. I'm not you don't have to the do trophy. this. I'm doing it for the love of exploring the map. I did the same thing in Breath of the Wild. The first thing I did oh. was I explored and uncovered the entire map. And then when I was done with the map, I was like, oh, I'm so sad now. <laughs> There's no more map. Huh. <laughs> so I realized that I'm weird, but I'm having a lot of fun. But did, did you guys know that your horse can die? I, I did yep. not know that. Jordan probably knew that. I <laughs> Jordan, so, so I thought Phobos was invincible, right? <laughs> because we'd been riding along and whatever happened, he always just seemed to pop up and walk away from it, right? Like one time we were riding along and we were going super fast. And I don't know if the game was kind of struggling to load things ahead of us or whatever, but a boar literally dropped out of the sky on top of us. <laughs> Like it was raining boars and it knocked Phobos down, knocked me off of him. And I was like, oh no, are you okay? Get up. And he just gets up like it's no big deal. And then another time we were riding past and this actual pack of lynxes, there was seven of them. I'd never run into so many at one time, but they just jump out of the bushes, knock us over. It was insane because, uh, and Phobos just walks away from that like it's no big deal. But I thought they were going to kill me because they were all attacking me at the same time. But then we happened to be next to a cottage. And then all of a sudden, all these cultists run out of the cottage. And they're like, oh, we're going to get you. And so then the lynxes start attacking them. And so they actually inadvertently <laughs> saved my life. <laughs> but in the end, I was the only one left standing, including all lynxes and cultists. Wow. Um. But yeah, so I thought Phobos was basically invincible. So I was riding him up to this like hunt huntress camp. And you know, they have all the animals in there. Mm -hmm. And so this wolf comes out at us because I went too close. Wolf comes out at us and I had a bunch of adrenaline segments. So I did this special attack on the wolf and Phobos drops to the ground. <gasps> and I was like, <gasps> what no phobos no like i was on my knees like doing the lion king thing like you gotta get up we gotta go home it's so sad <laughs> i was sad i had no idea that he could be hurt <laughs> so i had to quit the game and go back a safe point because oh. I, I i can't go on knowing that i've killed my horse <laughs> Don't, can't you just take another horse though i mean <laughs> Ask. Roger. I'm just asking. You could, though, right? I mean, that's a possibility, right? Well, I mean, technically, that... Phobos will come back. So, like, oh. it, it, it can die, but it it'll come back. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So we'll it will. What the heck kind back. of horse is it? Magical. <laughs> Magical horse. An animus horse. <laughs> Ooh. Because I like that. I've stolen. That... A, I've stolen a lot of people's horses. Sorry, I was just gonna say I stole no. a lot of people's horses. Was was that an inside joke at the studio, Jordan? Were you just like, oh, it's animus logic? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's, I mean, it was always fun before the game came out. And, like, you run into, like, a bug that's obviously a bug. And we were just like, we should just leave this in and just say it's some weird animus glitch. Like, that would be amazing. Because yeah. there were some really funny ones. Um, but <laughs> obviously, they don't get left in. But, like, yeah, just great. I just remember the first time playing it. Um, and, like, yeah, jumping off a massive cliff with Phobos and then just, like, hitting the ground with Phobos and it just, like, collapses to the ground really sad. And it was just, like, 
absolutely terrible. Like, I mean, I laughed, but then I was like, ha and I looked back, and it's like, limp horse body is just there, and I was like, oh, God, I shouldn't have leapt off that, like, 100-foot cliff with my horse, but whoops. Well, okay. Well, now I know that it's not a big deal if I accidentally kill him, but yeah. <laughs> at the time, it was very traumatizing. That's so funny, because... <laughs> the the way I've been playing this game, like I haven't really used my horse a whole lot. I've been using other people's horses and stealing <laughs> them. Oh my! Like my favorite story, and I know I mentioned this before, but my favorite story is where I had this. There was a bounty on somebody's, or he had a bounty on my head, and I'm like, I'm gonna go take this guy out. And I and I he was surrounded by guards, and I jump down and I kill him. And the guards just kind of stand there, like, what the hell just happened? I run off the top of that building jump down there's a horse there jump on that horse and i take off and before anybody knew even what happened i was out of there <laughs> and it wasn't my horse i stole somebody else's horse i don't know whose horse it was and then i after i was done with it i'm like okay you go off do your thing i'm done with you now <laughs> i mean that's one thing if there's horses available yeah but that's true in theory if you killed phobos and he didn't come back yeah. then you could never whistle for a horse when you needed yeah. one that's true I never whistle for horses. I just steal people's horses. That's how I roll. <laughs> nice. Uh, anything else, Blue? Yes. So I also played the Dragon Quest Eleven demo. <gasps> On Switch? Mm -hmm. On Switch. Um, it's my first Dragon Quest game. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I'm not thrilled by it so far. Oh. I mean, it's... I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just, it seems very much to be like one of those typical JRPGs that have plans to last hundreds of hours. And so the beginnings are always so slow. Yeah. That's one of those, I would say stick with it. It's one of those that once you get to your like full party, for me, the characters make that game a hundred percent. Like they mm -hmm. are absolutely amazing. Um, mm -hmm. So once you have your full party, it does get a lot better. But you're right. Because it's that massive game, it's like basically the prologue slash intro is like, you know, 10, 15 hours or whatever. And it is rough. It yeah, can be rough. I'm, I mean, I've played two hours of it. And I was like, I haven't seen anything so far that I haven't already played a zillion times. Yeah, the setup is kind of a slog, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't know if you say it gets better, I will believe you. It does a hundred percent. Okay. So uh, is that on the PlayStation four too, right? I'm yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In PC, I believe I it's think... on PC. I actually don't I know. Now if you say it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it is. I'm pretty positive. It is. I'm pretty positive. I own that game. <gasps> Roger play, Reichert owns play a play video game? <laughs> yeah, on the PlayStation 4. Whoa, <laughs> Whoa shocking. I mean, Roger Reichert owns a video game that he hasn't played? Shocking. <laughs> Blasphemy. It's still in its, it's still in its wrapper, actually. <laughs> well. <laughs> Someday, Roger, you need to post a picture of your, like, your entire game library. Yeah. Yeah. And then you might need to, like, go in and, like, circle the little corner of all the games that you've played <laughs> well that won't take me long at all <laughs> <laughs> the problem is i mean if i were to post the the pictures i mean i have a lot of physical but it's all the digital games that i own that would be that would be insane like mm -hmm. that would be bad mm -hmm. sorry keep going i'm sorry <laughs> okay so <laughs> then i played that then i played also um plague tale Oh, in a sense, yeah. Now. Yes. Is Ooh. there more than one? No, no, it's just like okay. I'm sorry. I just wanted to make 100% sure. Yes, that's the one. And, you know, that was interesting. I have real mixed feelings about it. I mean, first off, when the thing happens to the dog, and I was like, mm. I am going to kill every rat in this game, slowly and painfully. <laughs> um,. But yeah, it's it seems I I like the setup. I like the story. I would like to continue with that story and see what happens. I don't want to play it though. Mm, it's it's really slow paced. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not like I'm I think you're meant to uh, feel the stress of the 
you know, trying to sneak around and not be seen. And I'm just mostly like, oh, God, they walk so slow. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. Cushion, you beat that game, right? Yeah, I got the platinum trophy. Played it yeah. through twice. Yeah. Does it and get better? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the crouch speed is the crouch speed. I didn't you know, have too much of a problems with it. The gameplay gets more fleshed out and interesting because when it starts out, you can just like throw a rock or a pot and you get a lot more tools as the game goes on and you can upgrade those tools, which is pretty neat. And so that incentivizes exploration to find crafting materials. And then there's the story goes to some, you know, interesting places. But at the end, there are some fantastic set pieces that don't constrain themselves to, you know, historical fiction the way the rest of the game does, which I liked a lot. And then there's also some gameplay sequences where it's more you in an open area and you have to like get to the, like you start out in the spot, it tells you you have to get to that gate, but there's guards everywhere, figure it out, do it. And that's when you can use like any tool at your disposal in creative ways instead of the rest of the game where it's just kind of like, oh, there's a guard, you just throw the pot over there because there's a pot conveniently placed right here for you to get past this section, which is how the beginning really is. Yeah, basically. Like, it, at the very, very first thing that you do in the game is um, you're meant to, like, sneak up on the boar. Ah, uh, yes. And so, yeah, you've got your father behind you, and he says, okay, use the tall grass that's over there and hide in that, sneak up on the boar, right? So from where I my character was standing, I could see the tall grass, and I tried to walk in a straight line to the tall grass, but the game wouldn't allow me. Because I guess there was no map there. Oh, so weird. it was like I was walking into an invisible wall. Weird. And I was like, had just had to like walk and bounce off it and walk and bounce off it until I found where it was it actually wanted me to go. Weird. And that was really annoying. Huh. Yeah. Because I've never really visually, that problem. What are you doing, Blue? Where are you walking? <laughs> I was just trying to walk in a straight line. And visually, there was nothing between me and the grass. So it was just, it was not like the game put a rock there or something so that you would know you can't walk there. What are you, what are you playing that on? A PlayStation. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, is it, is, that, is it only out on PC and PlayStation, right? It's not on anything else? Or is it? At least PC and PlayStation. I'm not sure if it's on Xbox or not. Okay. I feel like it might be, but yeah, you should download the demo. Okay, I'll try it. It, do I'll try it doesn't it. take very long to play through. It's funny that you mentioned that because at first, when you said that was the first you know thing you had to sneak around and pass those boar in the tall grass, you know that reminds me of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. They did the same thing where it's like, well, you have to walk around these dinos these robotic dinosaurs in the tall grass, and it's your dad that's telling you to do it. Hmm, weird. Well, maybe there's only so many ways you can do a tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that is way too true. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then I, I'm taking up a lot of time, but lastly, what I played also was the demo of Code Vein. Oh, Tell me about yeah. it. Okay, so the game, it's it, the story is ridiculous. Just accept it. It's <laughs> set in a post-apocalyptic future um, where there's been a battle, and the result of the battle is that somehow there's been this cloud it's like a red cloud or something that comes up and surrounds this city and no one can exit it so uh everybody inside is trapped basically is this earth sure we'll go with okay. that um it i mean it it looks like a human city yes so <laughs> Everybody who lives there is called a revenant, and if I understand it correctly, revenants were created from dead humans, and they had viruses implanted into their hearts, oh. and so now they're all basically vampires. They exist oh. off of blood, but blood grows out of magical trees. Ooh, this sounds anime. Yes, it's all very, very anime. It looks very anime, and the story is very anime. Um... So basically, you have to go around and, and, and at least the, the mission in the tutorial was you have to go and find, uh, what are they called, blood tears or something on the trees. And of course, there's uh, all the monsters in your way because the monsters are the revenants that didn't get enough blood in time. And so they lost their minds or whatever and became monsters. So the combat, um, like 
the the comment that Ray received from Twitter. It's it feels very soulsy. It's kind of slow, that kind of deliberate, like you have to block and dodge or you're not gonna last five seconds. But at the same time, it's not nearly so punishingly difficult as a true Souls game. Hmm. So in that sense, it was kind of a, I felt it was kind of a fun combo. Um, you know, because you, you get that feeling of it being hard, but you can still be successful. Hmm. You don't and have you, to die and try it again 30 times. And you liked it so much that you pre-ordered it then. Right. And it's like for as ridiculous as the, the story and the setting was, is that I really enjoyed just playing it. I thought the gameplay was really fun. Um, and also there was this interesting moment because uh, you can design your character however you want. So I designed a female character. And then I'm walking through the area where there are monsters and I come across this other character and he eventually becomes your party member. But he's like, hey, uh, I was hoping to get some help with this this area coming up because there's a lot of monsters will you help me and i was like i was so happy when that happened i mean it seems like a really simple thing right but the thing that i've realized that i really love about games that it, where it doesn't matter whether you play as a man or woman is that people treat you like you're competent hmm. when you play as a woman hmm. whereas like if that scenario was translated to real life, it would probably be something like, well, I was hoping somebody would come along to help me, but I guess you'll have to do. Or, huh. oh, great, now I have to take care of you. Just stay behind me and I'll do it. You know, just that kind of stuff. Because if, at least in my experience, just being a woman in the world, kind of people's default reaction to you is that you can't do things without help. And so, you know, whether it's you've gone to the store and you've bought the 50 pound bag of dog food and they're like, do you need help with that out to your car? Or, you know, you go drop off your car at the repair place and the, the guys will say, okay, your car needs this and this and this. Do you need to call your husband and ask if that's okay? Mm. You know, it's just, it's stuff like this. That's just, you know, little things day in, day out. And so you you just kind of get used to it. You just kind of accept it until you realize that here's the game. And they just, it was a stranger that just treated you as if you were perfectly competent. And I was like, this is way more meaningful to me than it should be. That's awesome. Blue. That's, that's really powerful. This is why I have you on the podcast. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> because there's this one little throwaway line in a game and they didn't even mean it to have this impact, but this is yeah. how I'm taking it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think that's really good insight though. Uh, I mean, yeah, that was, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's, it's something that like, I, I, I think I'm an empath empathetic person, but this is something that I don't think about because you're right. I mean, it doesn't, really happen to me all that often so i mean not that i agree with it i'm just saying i mm -hmm. i'd never think of that so that's that's amazing mm -hmm. so i not a, i thought it was the gameplay was fun on its own and then it also you know just gave me a chance to just be a person in a game yeah and yeah. so i definitely pre-ordered it that's cool that's cool and and i think i mean i know you mentioned this before too but like even in assassin's creed odyssey like how, you know, you're playing as Cassandra mm -hmm. and how like, you know, she's like a goddess, right? Like kind of walks around. Just yes. Kicks, kicks I, so just, I just love that they didn't change the game yeah. and make it any different between when you're playing Alexios and when you're playing Cassandra. Yeah. That's cool. That's wow. That's a, that's, that's cool. That's cool to hear. And I'm, I'm assuming Jordan is somebody that's worked on games. It's cool to hear that too. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. It's always good when you do that kind of stuff and it resonates with people for sure. Yeah. Cool. Uh, when does that game release? Later, Later this, this month. month. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Anything else, Blue? Nope. That was it. <laughs> now uh, that I've talked for like 20 minutes. That was no, it. <laughs> no, that, that was awesome. Uh, Jordan, what have you been playing? Um, Not as much as I usually do. Usually I have a bunch of games going at once, but still ever since WoW Classic came out a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> yeah. um, it pulled me back in. I think I have like 60 hours into it now. Um, yeah, I've basically stopped playing all games except for that. And <laughs> I never played it when it first came out. I got started in Burning Crusade 
And mm. then I quit during Cataclysm. And that was like, you know, uh -huh. eight or so years ago. And I never went back to it since then. Um, so getting back to it now is amazing. And it's really sucked me in. And it's just like much slower. There's, you have to interact with people a lot more. Like there's no dungeon finder. So you can't just like be teleported to the dungeon with random people. You have to actually, you know, chat with them and group up and run to the location of the dungeon. And there's just a lot more like helping each other out in a sense of community and stuff. And I'm all about that right now. Yeah. So I'm cool. playing just a ton of that. And then um, game came out last week on the Switch. I think it's on PC as well. Yeah, it is. Um, Creature in the Well. Oh, yeah. Which is the indie game where it's like the top down like dungeon crawler, but it has like pinball mechanics kind of. Yep, yep. I don't know how to describe it. Other than <laughs> you sh everyone should go look it up because it's really fun and the art is amazing and it's a very unique type of gameplay. Um, and I'm really enjoying that so far. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, so, but... yeah. That's funny that you say that because Christian and I just recorded our review of Creature Noel uh, right before this podcast. Oh, nice. <laughs> and, yeah. and I said the same thing. I'm like, this is kind of hard to explain. Then Christian's like, just go watch some video of it. So you can yeah, I think it's it. definitely one of those games where you hear about it and you're like, oh, I don't think that's going to be my jam. But then you, if you watch just a gif of it or like a small little video, I think it's going to draw a lot of people in. It's one of those games. Yeah. Um, and it definitely did that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, I'm playing... Well, I'm going to play the Code Vein demo, especially hearing Blue talk about how much she enjoyed it. I want to definitely get into it this weekend. And then the Modern Warfare beta um, is out the last couple of days and is an open beta on PS4 today and tomorrow. And so I've been playing that. And I am very excited for it. It's nice. the... It definitely feels like kind of the older Call of Duty or kind of like a weird... Older Call of Duty mixed with older Battlefield in a way. It's like a mm -hmm. really nice combo. Um, I always hated all like the jetpacks and the like wall running and stuff like that. Um, there was always such a huge like discrepancy between people that put in thousands of hours and hopping into a game for the first time. Whereas when you can only just sprint around, it feels a lot more fair. But I'm really, really enjoying that. Nice. Nice. Uh, yeah, Christian, you're really into those games, so. Yes, Great. sir. Yeah. I picked up everyone since Ghosts. Yeah. So I'll probably get into this one, too. Cool. I haven't played the beta at all yet. I'm very curious to see. But I know that the beta usually isn't representative of the final product so much. I notice that betas tend to run a little worse, especially on PC, where I mm. played a couple betas in the past. But on PS4, I'd like to give it a shot, see, see what they got going on. All right. Thanks, Jordan. What have you been playing, Christian? So the I played through Metro Last Light this week. I oh. played through that beginning to end. And I played through 2033 last year. And I've got a buddy at work. He's uh, Metro Exodus, the most recent third installment in the franchise, uh, video game-wise, is his favorite game released so far this year. And he said, you should play it. And I was like, well, I played 2033. I might as well play Last Light to get caught up. And he's like, yeah, you probably should. And so I played through Last Light, and I really enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed it more than 2033 even. It's first-person shooter, pretty slow-paced, but it's still linear. And it's kind of like a horror first-person shooter in a sense. It's not like fear, where this little girl is just popping up and crawling down a hallway, and then you go, ah, and then everything's fine again. It's more like seeping, tone-setting like universe type stuff because it's based on a russian novel or a russian series of novels i'm not entirely sure but it's based on uh this setting where russia was bombed by a nuke and you are one of the people who survived by living in the metro tunnels and basically there's civilizations that spring up in these metro tunnels and that's where the people live Meanwhile, the surface is kind of overcome with radiation and dangerous storms and crazy radioactive creatures. Mm. And 2033, I think, was really good. It really did a great job at establishing the universe and giving you kind of some exposure to some of the crazy stuff going on. And it also was really effective at creating this slow-paced first-person shooter that like is good at making you feel stressed in a way that's not detrimental to fun or fun gunplay or gameplay. 
So you've got like this gas mask you have to make sure to put on every time you go outside. Otherwise, you're going to suffocate. And then you've got filters that you got to find and you have to swap out the filter every now and then. Otherwise, you're going to suffocate. And then you've got to make sure to wipe off your gas mask because as you're blowing away these mutants, you're getting blood all over your face and you got to wipe it off so you can actually see. And sometimes you get rain on it. You got to wipe that away. And there's a lot going on. That sounds but, stressful. Yeah, it yes, does. <laughs> it does. And it is stressful from the outset. But once you kind of get your feet wet and get into it, I played on the hardest difficulty and it wasn't even that bad on there because on the hardest difficulty, they say, oh, we're not going to let you have as much ammo or filters. And I was still fine throughout the entirety without many problems. And that's also where it's at its best, Metro Last Light, especially because... The hardest difficulty makes you do more damage as well as the enemies. Yes, oh. that is how you make oh. a hard difficulty. That is how Kingdom Hearts 2 did it. That's why I freaking love its hardest difficulty because you feel like a glass cannon. You can take out anything pretty easily, but you have to be very careful because they can take you out easily. And that's why I think the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 campaign realistic, realistic difficulty was a bunch of crap. I beat it anyways, but you could die in one hit and everything else t still took like 20 hits to kill. Mm. Mm. That is not the case in Metro Last Light. And it's a great sequel as far as the Metro franchise is concerned because it takes those tried, tested, and true stuff from 2033, the gas mask stuff, the setting stuff, and it fleshes it out a little bit more. You're going to different locations. There's some aquatic stuff in there that was not in 2033 because 2033 was largely just bombed out buildings, Metro, and that's about it. And Last Light has the Metro, but you also go to, like, these catacombs, and there's some boss battles, which is also new. And there's also just, like, an over overriding level of polish that didn't exist in 2033, and it makes it feel kind of more blockbustery in a way that I liked a lot. Hmm. That's a game I own that I haven't played. I need to play that game, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I've heard Metro Exodus is also very good. I'd like to get to Metro Exodus before the year's out, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I don't own that game. It's if on Game did, Pass. Oh, it is. I do own it. <laughs> if we did this podcast um, video, if we filmed it, yeah. we would have a board somewhere. And then every time Roger said he owned a game, but he hadn't played it, <laughs> we would just make a mark on the board. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's, oh, that's true. And eventually we would have to get a second board. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, anything else, Christian? I also played through most, I believe I'm coming up on the end of Greedfall, Ooh, which was a recently released yeah. action RPG out of the studio Spiders. And uh, it's out on, I want to say, pretty much everything, PC, Xbox One, PS4. And it's Not an action Switch. RPG, like I said. What's that? Not on Switch. No, sir. I don't think that thing could run on Switch. That's no. okay. Uh, action RPG by Spiders. And Greedfall, do you guys know who Spiders are? Nope. This development studio. I mean, uh, I think they came up with a bunch of games that nobody knows of. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, I mean, please tell us what games they've come up with because I really don't know the studio. I'm only aware of one of the games that they came out with. It was like two, three years ago. And that one I remember being very aware of because it was an action RPG. It was called Technomancer. And it oh, got no. bad reviews because the game yeah. was not very good. I played it a little bit myself in preparation, and that game is not very good. The combat's broken. The plot's uninteresting. It's plotting. It's slow-paced. It's boring. And mm. Spiders made another action RPG, Greedfall, and it is actually competent. Greedfall is impressively decent. Coming from the same studio that put together Technomancer, this is like a demonstration of a ridiculous amount of progression that's happened on Spider's behalf. There is a lot of, a lot of just, it's, it's crazy. So it's an action RPG and it borrows a lot from Witcher and Bioware stuff like Dragon Age. It takes place in the 17th century, I think like 1600s. So you're spending a lot of time in like these uh water port shanty towns and you sail on a boat across the sea and you go to this island and the game largely takes place on the island and you're kind of looking for a cure for this disease that's coming and your mom is suffering from the disease very badly you have signs of the disease and you have to find the cure on this recently colonized island and so you're kind of feeling it out understanding the political kind of layout of the whole island because other places have colonized it too as well as the natives and so 
this isn't the most original video game story you're going to find where, you know, stranger in a strange land, there's weird natives, people don't like them because racism and allegory. And, you know, you know what you're going to get. It's on the tin, but it's competently constructed in a way that makes it clear that they're aping Bioware. Like they're having conversations where it's like, you know, these kinds of conversations are kind of pointless in a way you would find in a Bioware game. But the pointless conversations in a Bioware game tend to be more interesting than just talking about, I don't know, what your cousin Joe did last week and about how he just came home from the port town. You know, that's fine. But uh, it's still, like, surprisingly competent. It's not bad. The combat system works. You can slice dudes with swords. You can shoot them with guns. You can use magic. You can zap them with some of your mage spells. And also there's, like, a supernatural kind of underpinning to everything, too. There's, like, these monsters that you run into that feel very Witcher-esque in a way that I liked a lot. There's some really cool enemy designs in there. And so, so far, really presently surprised with Greedfall. Yeah, it's kind of weird because that game dropped either earlier this week or late last week, right? Yes. And, and and like, I saw a lot of people streaming that game, and then Borderlands 3 came out, and that ended that that uh, that run of Greedfall, which is too bad because, I mean, I think, I mean, it, it looked interesting. It looked like, like you said, a competent game. Uh, it just kind of suffers from the fact that there's a lot of games releasing right now. Yeah, I think that Greedfall and Borderlands 3 kind of have different appeals for the most part. I mean, not for me, someone who plays a little bit of everything. But that's Greedfall is very much like old school uh, Western RPG type sensibilities like a Bioware where you're building your character's stats and you can like get out of certain situations if you have a high enough charisma stat or what have you. And the combat's kind of slower paced. You got to build your character properly. You got to equip your party accordingly. And so it's much more like RPG than something like Borderlands is. Yeah, sure. Uh, and then what else have we been playing? Well, Greedfall being yet another bastion of the middle tier video game. Coming back. Thank you, Focus Home Interactive. Shout out to Focus Home Interactive, oh. THQ Nordic, rep yeah. in the middle tier. That's what I like to see. But the other game I've been playing is Borderlands 3. I have yeah. I've put is. like <laughs> yep. I've put like uh eight hours into it thus far, not very far into it. That's spread across two characters, so you can cut the amount of you know how far I've gotten into the game in half because that's been with two characters. But I so in the lead up to Borderlands 3, about a month ago, I spent 50, 60 hours playing Borderlands 2 a couple more times, getting all the trophies, playing it with my little brother, having a grand old time. And so I've I've been in a spot where I'm ready for more Borderlands because I played the crap out of Borderlands 2 enough. I'm ready for a new one, and I want to see some new locales. And the reviews leading up to release, the early reviews, were saying, I hope you like Borderlands because this is a lot more Borderlands, and it's not yeah. much else. I hope you yeah. like Borderlands 2 because this is Borderlands 2.5. And as soon as I got my hands on the game, I was surprised by the actually significant and notable mechanical advancements that they have made from the jump to from 2 and the pre-sequel to 3. The guns feel so much better. And I had an inkling that would be the case after seeing a little bit of gameplay footage. I was like, ooh, these, the way they're aiming down the sights here looks a lot like Call of Duty and not so much Borderlands. And that is very much the case. The gun handling oh. feels much better, far improved. It feels far less weightless and floaty the way the previous Borderlands games did. It's nice and tight and focused, and they have the addition of a hit marker, which is new for Borderlands. And it's oh. like this nice little small hit marker, and it works really well for differentiating a kill for you. And so, like, the killing rhythm that you begin to establish is actually satisfying. So in the previous Borderlands games, I would kind of just shoot stuff to see the numbers pop out and see the numbers slowly get builder and level up. Whereas in Borderlands 3, I'm actually enjoying the shooting itself. And that has made me thoroughly enjoy these first handful of hours I've spent with it so far. Nice. Nice. There's also some story stuff that I like a lot too. I mean, there's fan service in there. There's callbacks and... Uh, like references to other games. Like there's an Assassin's Creed, like three reference in there, I think. And it just tickled my, you know, fan service tickled spot in just the right way where I'm like, you know, 
I recognize that. And you guys put that in there for the 2% of people who are going to recognize that reference. And I feel seen. That mm. means a lot, Gearbox. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Mm. That's awesome. So are you playing with your brother right now? Yes, sir. I'm playing... I'm playing with my brother and one of my friends, uh, so we're working our way through Borderlands 3 one level at a time. Nice. Nice. Cool. Anything else? Nope. That's it. Uh, I also have been playing a Gearbox game, a published game by Gearbox, <gasps> I should say, and that is Risk of Rain 2. Oh, I forgot that was published by them. Yeah. Look at you. Early access yeah. on Steam is where yeah. it first came out. I'm playing it on the Switch. Okay. Uh, How's so it run? It runs good. I mean, it runs well. I mean... And that was the most convincing thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. No, it's fine. It runs good. Yeah, it's <laughs> good. It's good. Uh, no, Mike and I played it. So I convinced Mike, speaking of which, Mike uh, will join us next week. So uh, he wasn't able to join us this week. But him and I have been playing Risk of Rain 2, or at least we played one game together. And we streamed it, which was fun. So you can check that out at twitch.tv slash gamerheadspodcast. And, uh, yeah, I mean, here's the thing about the game. I, it, the, a few things that it lacks, it lacks a map, so I we, we got lost so bad. And the, the, the terrain is so similar. I mean, it's cool artwork, but it's very similar. And if you, you can get lost super easy. Have and you I, played the original Risk of Rain? I have not. Okay. Uh, and I heard this is, you know, much... I mean, I heard that a lot of people liked the original one, but it was like a side scroller, right? Yes. And this one is a like open world 3D game. Uh, so they took a yeah, they took a huge step in a in a different direction with this game. Uh, and it's good. I mean, I like it. It's it's just it's it's and it's not hard to play. That's I think one thing I like about the game. It's easy to pick up and play, but I really don't know what's going on in the game. And maybe it's because it's still early access. I think that this hasn't come out come out yet. I think that they've uh, are still working on it on Switch. Yeah, I think so. Weird. Yeah. It's are there other games like that on Switch where they're like mm. works in progress? Uh no, I don't think so. Huh. I mean, I guess you can argue that Fortnite is kind of a work in progress. I don't know, isn't it? I mean, has that game really released? I don't know. <laughs> But uh, it, it's good. I mean, it's it's just it's weird because the UI feels like um, PC, so they didn't do much with that. Um, but it's okay. I just I again I don't know what's going on. But apparently the devs are going to come up with new characters that you can unlock and more weapons and more lore and stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. It's it doesn't. It's like one of those games like Fortnite where you don't have to have a much lore. You can just kind of jump in and play with your friends. And I think that's where it's fun, where you can play with your friends. If you play the solo, it's not probably that much fun. But playing with your friends is fun. Um, so I've been playing that. And Creature in the Well, I've been playing that. Uh, we talked about that. So we'll we'll have that review on our, podcast, or on our website uh, by the week's end. And I think that might have been all I've been playing playing i did play some tetris 99 as well and uh so now they have the daily the daily challenges um so i've been playing that to get those daily challenges and oh i have been playing legend of zelda link to the past as well on the on the switch online so been doing that too so uh with that then that's all i've been playing let's move on to how people can get a hold of us and we'll start with you jordan how can people get a hold of you Sure thing. Uh, best way to get in contact with me is on Twitter at Cryptic Jordan. I'm on there far more than I should be. So <laughs> you can always find me on Twitter. Nice. Uh, and Christian, how can people get a hold of you? I'm also on Twitter at Christian Cubs. Otherwise, you can read my reviews like the upcoming one for Greedfall on NewGameNetwork.com or listen to them like Creature in the Well or possibly Astral Chain in the near future yeah. on GameRadsPodcast.com. That's right. And Blue, how can people get a hold of you? You can almost always find me on Twitter. My handle is at WritersView, and it's spelled with a Y, so W-R-Y. And then I also have a website, which is WritersView.com. Nice. And listeners, as I mentioned before, you can always get a hold of us. Best way probably is on Twitter. You can get a hold of us on GamerHeads at GamerHeads PC. But you can also send us emails at info at GamerHeads Podcast. You can go to our Facebook page at GamerHeads Podcast or Facebook.com slash GamerHeads Podcast. 
And then go to our website, too, at GamerHeadsPodcast.com. All right. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for joining us this week. Thank you for having me. I know that was short notice, and I appreciate you jumping in uh, and when I when I asked you to. So thank you Always. so much. Nice. And uh, Christian, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. And Blue, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And listeners, thank you so much for joining us and listening to our podcast. If you like what you hear, you can leave us a review and you can go to iTunes, to our iTunes uh, link. They'll be in the show notes there. And leave us a review there and we'll read your review on our show. And leaving us a review will help us grow, not only from us understanding what you're looking for in the podcast, but also it helps us grow by having other people find us uh, on iTunes as well. Um, so the more reviews, the more uh, likely people are going to find us on iTunes. And if you have any questions for the for the cast, you can always tweet us or you can send us an email as well. We appreciate any kind of feedback you have for us. So with that, we'll bid you adieu and we'll talk to you next week. See ya. Bye. Adios.